Far in the future, in the 101st century, House Harkonnen controls the planet Arrakis. Planet Arrakis is a planet whose mostly territory is desert and also produces spice, a very valuable substance in the universe. There live the native inhabitants who guard the planet Arrakis, called the Freeman. House Harkonnen has also controlled the spice on Arrakis for a long time, but the Freeman have always failed to free Arrakis from their grip. One day, the Emperor issued a decree to the Harkonnen faction. Next we will be introduced to Paul, son of the leader of House Atreides, and the ruler of the planet Caladan. He and his mother, Lady Jessica, are preparing for a ceremony that will be held in a few moments. Then came a representative from the Emperor, Padisha, Shaddam IV from House Carino, along with representatives from members of the Imperial Court, the Spacing Guild, and the Bene Gesserit sisters. It is told that House Atreides will be assigned to replace House Harkonnen as the ruler of the planet Arrakis. Then the Duke Leto, who is the representative of House Atreides, agreed to it. Actually, he already knew that this was a political game played by Emperor Shaddam IV. He explained to Paul that House Atreides was a threat to the Empire. With that, the Empire intended to manipulate House Atreides and House Harkonnen to make them fight for Arrakis. Leto also explained that his goal was not the spice resource, but to ally with the freemen to get the desert power. Then Leto sent a soldier named Duncan Idaho, who was Paul's combat trainer, to Arrakis to study the desert and the freemen. With Duncan Idaho's departure, Paul now trains with one of the soldiers named Gurney. On the other hand, in the Harkonnen camp, a commander named Raban, and the leader of Harkonnen, Baron, also realized that the Emperor would stage a coup against them in House Atreides previously, Paul had told Jessica and Duncan about his disturbing dreams. He sees a woman and flashes of the future. This makes the truthsayer named Helen from the Empire come to Caladan and intend to test Paul, who will face an alternative death test to see his control over his impulses when feeling immense pain. He passes the test. Then it is revealed that Jessica is a servant of the Bene Gesserit, where she inherits the power of the voice and also has advanced fighting skills compared to other soldiers. She also arranges the politics behind the scenes that will happen in Arrakis later. Jessica was supposed to only give birth to a daughter, but she broke the rule and raised Paul. A few weeks later, House Atreides travels across the stars to the planet Arrakis. Upon arriving there, Paul meets Thufir Hawat, security officers who serve Duke Leto. The inhabitants of Arrakis call him Lisan al Gaib to Paul and his mother, which means the voice from another world. The Bene Gesserit used to be here and spread the belief in Lisan al Gaib for centuries. Lisan al Gaib itself is a term from the Freeman for someone who is believed to lead them to heaven, peace. Unlike the figure of Kwisatz Haderach who wants to control someone's memories, Lisan al Gaib is a figure who gives freedom to the Freeman. A moment later, Jessica gets a Christ knife a knife made from the teeth of a sandworm, from a freeman who considers the sandworm to be the creator. They call the sandworm Shai Hulud. On the other hand, Helen Mohiam visits the leader of House Harkonnen and negotiates with him that Paul Atreides and Lady Jessica should not be harmed when they attack Atreides in Arrakis later, because she still has hope that Paul will become the Kisatz Haderach. Duncan returns from his duty of studying Arrakis. He meets Duke Leto and brings a leader of the freeman named Stilgar. They negotiate and find an agreement. Duke Leto will not disturb or look for the Sieches or their houses, while the freemen will free them to harvest the spice. Then Duke Leto asks Thufir to take him to the spice harvester. Thufir says that it is a dangerous thing because there are giant sandworms that run under the desert. He orders Thufir to also bring the imperial judge of the change, who was sent by the empire to accompany him. Then Duke Leto meets an imperial judge of the change named Dr. Liet, who oversees the transition of leadership of Atreides. They will see the spice harvester machine directly with Paul and Gurney. They fly to the spice harvesting place. While on the plane, they find a giant sandworm that moves towards the harvester. And the evacuation plane that will lift the harvester malfunctions. They try to save the crew inside the harvester, and they finally succeed. However, Paul was left behind because he felt something entering his mind after being exposed to the spice for a while. This gave him a vision of the future, but luckily Gurney approached him and saved him. They almost got eaten by a giant worm. Meanwhile, someone from the Harkonnens visited the elite imperial troops called the Sardaukar to ally with them. 
This was according to the Emperor's order. When night came, Dr. Yue sneaked into the center of the Arakeen Fortress, killing some guards. He also turned off the defense system of the House Atreides. He helped the Harkonnens to ambush the Atreides. Dr. Yue was forced to do this because he wanted to free his wife, who was killed by Baron Harkonnen, the leader of the Harkonnens. Then Dr. Yue also shot Leto with a tranquilizer, but he still gave him his last respect. He apologized and helped save Paul by giving him a poison implanted in his teeth, hoping that it would kill Baron when Leto was captured by him. Soon after, the Harkonnens began their attack after the Atreides' shield was turned off. They tried to fight back, but the Emperor's elite troops, the Sardaukar, who had above-average fighting skills, overpowered the Atreides' troops. In the fortress, Duncan Idaho tried to find Paul and Lady Jessica in their room, but they were not there. Duncan killed all the Harkonnen troops in front of him and went looking for Paul with a plane. It turned out that Paul and Jessica were kidnapped by the Harkonnen troops and taken by plane. They tried to kill Paul and Jessica and betray Helen Mohiam, but Paul managed to escape thanks to the power of the voice that he and his mother used. But the plane they were on was sabotaged. They were stranded outside the fort. Then in the fortress, the Baron had captured Duke Leto and stripped him naked. Dr. Yue was also there and demanded his promise from the Baron to free his wife. But the Baron instead bit off his head. Baron then tried to kill Leto, but thanks to the poison implanted in his teeth by Dr. Yue, he managed to kill almost everyone in the room. Meanwhile, Paul had another vision of the future, this time clearer. He saw himself with the woman who often came to his dreams, saw a great war, and became a warrior. And his eyes turned blue like the freeman. Not long after, he managed to get away from the Arakeen fortress, then emitted a signal for the Atreides. And then Duncan and Dr. Leet came to pick him up and took him to an old station where the ecology test was. Unfortunately, when they were hiding in there, the Sardaukar troops came and hunted them. Duncan, who realized that the Sardaukar were chasing Paul and Jessica, locked the entrance and made himself fight against many Sardaukar. But he finally died. Then Dr. Leet told Paul and Jessica to escape using a plane, while she would walk to a predetermined point. When Dr. Yue wanted to use the desert power, a Sardaukar troop came from behind and stabbed her. In her last moments, Dr. Leet made rhythmic knocks with her hands, and made Shai Hulud or the sandworm come and eat them. On the other hand, Paul and his mother managed to escape using a plane, but it turned out that the Sardaukar troops chased them from behind. This made Paul dare to break through the sandstorm in front of him. When Paul was about to reach his limit, he got a vision of another world and turned off the plane's engine, and made the plane soar high due to the wind of the sandstorm, and finally, they were at a sufficient height. Then he turned on the plane's engine again. The plane began to lose its wings, but they managed to land safely. They were in the middle of the desert, which made them have to walk in the way of the freemen so as not to be approached by the sandworm. When they were close to the rocks, they accidentally stepped on a drum sand and instead made the sandworm chase them. After running, they arrived at the rocks. But the sandworm showed its form and made them stand still so as not to be eaten by it. Then the sound of a thumper or a worm bait machine was heard, making them safe from the pursuit of the sandworms. It turned out that they were not the only ones who stopped by the rocks. There were freemen there, and by chance they met Stilgar, who was Duncan's friend. Stilgar initially respected Paul and told his friends not to touch him, but his friends seemed doubtful of Paul's figure, who was considered as Lisan al Gaib because he looked like a child. And they also needed the water in Paul and Jessica's bodies. Stilgar thought that Jessica was an old woman who was weak and attacked her, but he didn't know that Jessica was a follower of the Bene Gesserit and had a cool fighting ability. In the end, Stilgar lost and promised that Paul and Jessica would be under his protection and would take them to the Siege. Here Paul also met a woman who often appeared in his dream visions, and this woman's name was Chani, the woman who often accompanied Paul in his dream world. When they were about to go to the Siege, a freeman named Jameis objected to Stilgar. He challenged Jessica to fight him, but Stilgar did not allow it, and Paul volunteered to fight Jameis one-on-one. -on -one. Paul overpowered Jameis and told him to surrender, but the freeman did not give up and forced Paul to kill Jameis. With Jameis's death, Paul was accepted by the freeman and was taken to the Sechtaber, 
along with Chani and Stilgar. Paul and Jessica also went to the Siege. On the way, they also saw the site of the Desert Power, where someone wrote a sandworm. This was the beginning of Paul's journey to become a Freeman in the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing, you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.